Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe InDesign scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to move, rotate, and scale all the types of objects you need inside of InDesign. This is useful if you need to do any kind of batch task or just need to make changes to a bunch of images or rectangles or circles or anything on your screen. We're going to be looking at how we can move different objects all around our scene, which allows us to give an X and a Y coordinate and allow us to move it in this case one and two inches vertically and horizontally. We can also change the scale of things vertically and horizontally if we want to resize things. And of course we have the option to rotate things as well. And I'm gonna be going a little more depth into how we can actually do this to every type of element and how we can get access to those as well. Before we get started with this video, I do wanna remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link, super simple code, but you can go ahead and use it for yourselves and start with this project. Make sure you follow us there for coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. A link for that is in the description down below. And of course, in the description, check out the links for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange, where I upload other cool tools as well. All right, so I am using Extend Script today because it is for me the easiest way to reference the object model viewer and see all of the available things we have to access and change in InDesign. Um, and in terms of my test project here in InDesign, I just have a simple setup with uh, two layers. Each one has its own rectangle. And of course, this could be any other kind of shape as you'll see shortly. So the first thing we're going to do is define our document, which is our active document we have open. We'll say document is equal to document, And to make things easy, uh, to start getting down into what we can change the position of, which is the sort of sub-layer type things. If you have a rectangle on your layer, you can change the position of that. If you create other types of shapes, whether an ellipse or a polygon, this will also uh, create something in the layer which you can change the position of and the rotation and scale, of course. Uh, so we're going to make this easy by just grabbing the active layer. So we'll say var layer is equal to, go ahead and zoom in here, uh, our document dot active layer. Now, anytime you want to make sure these variables are correct, we could just say right line or alert layer dot name in this case. And when we run this, we get layer one. So this is indeed the layer we have selected. If I select layer two and run it, it's going to then say, of course, layer two. Now, next is sort of an important thing to know how to access all the different things that are within layers. So if we go ahead and navigate in our object model viewer, to the layer object, it's going to tell us all the properties and methods we have access to. And there are certain ones in here that we will want access to because oftentimes we'll want to change the size, rotation, and position of text frames, text boxes, rectangles, like we have in this case, uh, even radio buttons, polygons, ovals and any other kind of graphic or page element, maybe you have an image imported that you want to change the properties of. All of that is basically represented by some kind of property under here. So the naming scheme is actually pretty convenient. So I wanted to access all of the, the rectangles within my current selected layer. All we would have to say is layer.rectangles. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and write this to my console. And you can see we have an object called rectangles. Let's get the length of the rectangles. In this case, we have one. But if I did duplicate my existing rectangle uh, by alt dragging it and run it, you can see now we have two rectangles. So we do indeed have access to everything inside of here. If I wanted to get this, say, new polygon I just created, we could just say layer.polygons.length. And now we have access, if we want, to those polygons. So as you can see, you just need to know the keyword to get the sub layer types in order to now, uh, we're going to store our polygon or our rectangle and do some modifications to it. So in order to say, get our rectangle here, we can just say var rect is equal to our layers.polygons, uh, but we wanna change this to rectangles. And let's grab the first one. Of course, this is an array of rectangles, so the proper syntax is to grab the very first or zeroth index. 
And just to make sure this is valid, we can say rect. We have an object that's a rectangle. And as you can see, yeah, we have an object that is a rectangle. Now, what can we do with our rectangle? If we go back into our object model viewer, uh, we navigate to the rectangle object. You can see there's a whole bunch of different properties and methods, but there are, of course, three that we're going to be going over in this tutorial. The first of which is dot move. So if I grab my rect and say dot move, we need to basically provide it with uh, the X amount we want to move it and the Y amount. So if I go ahead and just say two comma two, it needs to be an array, of course, one for the X, one for the Y value. And now I run this, you can see it's being moved over two and down two. And because my current units, as you can see by my guides here, are in inches, it's going to do it by the default unit, which is two inches uh, to the right and two inches down. If you click on the actual move method, it's going to tell you you can give a second argument with the uh, specific array of measurement units. So if you wanted to use uh, pixels or anything else, you can do that as well. Next, how do we scale something up if we wanted to change the scale of something? Well, there's actually not a method for this, but we do want to change the properties called vertical scale, which is a read write property, as well as horizontal scale. So if I go ahead and say, uh, just grab my rect and say vertical scale, uh, let's say times equals three. This is going to multiply the original vertical scale by three and set that as its value. So if I run this, you can see my vertical scale goes up by three. And we can do the same thing with the horizontal scale. And you can even change the value to be something more specific, like 1.5. And now when I run this, I'm going to get both a vertical and a horizontal scale shift. And this is, I believe, based on the upper left corner of the layer. So if you wanted to, say, scale it and then move it, we can move it uh, back backwards once we have changed the scale like this. So that's how we can start combining these if we want. But there is, of course, one more that we want to have access to, and that is the rotation. And the rotation, if we scroll up here, we have a rotation angle property. So I can say rect dot rotation angle is equal to uh, between, of course, zero and 360, or actually it says in this case, negative 360 and 360. So if I wanted to rotate 45 degrees, just give it 45. And, and now if I run this, it's going to rotate 45 degrees. If I run it again, it's not going to continue rotating 45 degrees. It's actually snapping that to 45 degrees. But if I wanted to, I could say maybe times equals three and continue to rotate it then after that. So that's a couple of tricks. You can either set the scale and the rotation explicitly each time, or you can do something like a multiplier or a divider to kind of change it every time. Or you can even have some kind of uh, slider linked up to it to control it. The possibilities are quite endless. So just to recap, in order to move stuff uh, position-wise, rotate stuff or scale stuff in Adobe InDesign, you basically need to first grab a layer or layers, and then you need to go be able to access the sort of sub-layer properties, whether it's a polygon, an oval, uh, a rectangle, an image, or anything like that. Any of these sub things can usually be accessed um, and of course rotated using move. Basically, all you have to do is have a layer or two, loop through them, and then you can get these sub layer items that are like rectangles, polygons, ovals, images, and other stuff you can stuff inside of a layer and then apply move, scaling, and rotation angle changes to those as you wish. This could be used practically to do things like if you have a whole book written out and you want to switch the images on every page, you could swap the positions, you could increase the size of things if needed, and the possibilities are really endless with these few simple commands. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, down below hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel, and down in the description you should check out the code for this in the github link follow us there for coding updates and on instagram for other live updates if you're not already a member of our discord server make sure you come and join to get help with scripting extensions plugins submit tutorial ideas and much more and if you'd like to help support us on youtube you can do so in the description by becoming a member supporter premium supporter or vip which comes with cool perks like discord status badges vip streams and much more and also check out the links to adobe exchange gumroad and ae scripts to check out some other tools and stuff that i create Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.